you're all here. Hey guys. Sorry I'm a couple minutes late. Let me get this adjusted a little bit. Whew. I rushed home to join you guys. I mean, like, flew down the highway at a gazillion miles an hour, speeding like a bat out of hell, uh, trying to get home. I have had a whoo, crazy day. Oh, man. All right. Uh, what is with the hair? Oh, man, my hair today. <sighs> my hair has been a little bit of an issue for me today. So let me tell you. Here's how my day started. I woke up this morning and I knew I had to be in the city early because I planned to meet with uh, Katie for coffee in the afternoon, like the early afternoon. So you look like an Italian juice head. Thanks. That seems rude. Whatever. <laughs> so I, um, I went to get, uh, so I, okay, so I woke up and I knew I had to get in the city early. And the reason was I was uh, contacted yesterday afternoon to come be a guest on a television show that was filming in the city today. And I, you know, usually I don't do, I mean, sometimes I'll do that kind of stuff. I, you know, as you have learned, I do not love being on camera, but I will do it, you know, when, when I need to. So I said yes, cause you know, I have some free time on my hands. But then I realized uh, this morning when I woke up, I am not at all prepared to be on TV. My hair had grown out and was a little curly and crazy. And I thought, oh, oh shit, I need to, uh, I need to, I need to go get a haircut before I go into the city so that I at least look a little uh, TV appropriate. And this is, by the way, after last night, in the middle of the night, I realized I had blue hair. And I'm like, oh, shit, I need to let these guys know I have blue hair. So it was crazy. So anyway, so I got up. I ran. I got Romy all ready to go to the daycare. The blue is on top. I don't know if you can see it, but it's there. It kind of looks purple, but I swear it's blue. And so anywho, so uh, I got Romy all ready for school. And then, of course, she doesn't actually have, like, regular school. Now she's just in, like, daycare because her school is finally uh, out of school for the summer. And so I'm like, oh, God, now i got to make her lunch. So it was a little bit extra long trying to get her all put together and out the door. Uh, the vinyl uh, wall does change colors. Yes, Ed. Uh, okay, so I got us all ready, got us out the door on my way to get a haircut. I go to get a haircut. And now I didn't go to my usual gal because I didn't have the kind of time I needed to get in and like get an appointment and all that jazz. So I just went to like the local like super cuts, right? Just hoping that I could just get a little trim, just kind of, you know, fix things, make it, just trim it up. Dove says mistake. Yeah, I know, but I was willing to take the risk. So I got there sat down and there were like these two kind of funky cool chicks who were working there one named Lisa one named Michelle and they were they were they they both had funky cool hair so I'm like okay these are my gals these guys they can do they know what they're doing I'm not worried wait 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 meanwhile there's these obnoxious oh my god the most obnoxious family I've ever seen in my life waiting in the waiting area the mom was getting her hair cut and then the dad and probably five kids, I, not even kidding, five kids all under the age of 12. And they're all like sitting there and they're going in and out of the door and they're dinging the stupid doorbell on the door. They were the most obnoxious family. And then they were like running back and forth and like going over and talking to the mom and just being distracting and annoying. And everyone, everyone there hated them. Uh, Mormons? No, they were not Mormons. And... Uh, Anyway, so they were crazy. They were driving us all fucking nuts. And the second they left, the two hairstylists, <laughs> they gave each other a look that you could write a book about that look because it said everything you needed to know and then some because, let me tell you, that family, everyone in that room wanted to punch them. I sit down. I tell the lady what I want, this really cool chick named Lisa. She trims everything up. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. And then she's like, well, do you want me to style it? And I'm like, well, I don't know. I mean, in one way, yes, it'd be great to have it styled. 
But then at the same time, every time I go to these TV things, they usually like to do their own stupid thing. So I'm like, you know what? Let's just leave it kind of down and flat like it is right now. Um, and then I said, you know, if they would prefer for me to put it up in the Mohawk, which is what I would prefer to do, you know, I'll do that. But I'm supposed to be like a dignified person on this interview. I'm there to represent us gay people. And so I, you know, I'm like, ah, I'll just leave it be. I get out of the chair. We walk over to the register. I reach into my back pocket. No wallet. Not there. Fucking forgot to put it in my pocket. That's what I call a nightmare. <laughs> and I'm like, no, God, what the fuck? And I'm thinking, do I have any cash in my car? No, no cash. I think I have a dollar or two, three, maybe. I'm like, oh my God, what the fuck do I do now? And by the way, I don't live close to this place. I'm a good, solid 25 minutes away to get back to my house. I look at the girl and I'm like, I am so sorry. I don't have my wallet with me. And I'm like, and my wallet is 30 minutes away. And I'm like, do you trust me? <laughs> And by the way, this is during the conversation where we were talking and, you know, I mentioned the fact that I'm unemployed <laughs> and I'm like, do you trust me? She goes, yeah, I trust you. And I'm like, great. Throw Romy in the car, take off like a bat out of hell. I have to go all the way home, grab my wallet, go all the way back down the hill, drop Romy off at the daycare and then run over to pay this woman. Which by the way... I gave her a very nice tip for being so patient and understanding with me, just for the record. I look at the clock and I'm like, oh shit, look at the time. Look, look at the time. I am supposed to be meeting Katie for coffee in like 35 minutes. Oh hell. Oh hell. Uh, Giz Gizman, Giziman, Gizimon says I should have left Romy's collateral. Yeah, I'm sure that's what they would have wanted. I considered leaving my cell phone as collateral, but they seem pretty cool, so whatever. Uh, I get in the car. I Why not call your wife and get, your, get her credit card number? Oh, you know what? That would have been smart. But honestly, I needed my wallet anyway because I was going into the city immediately leaving there. And I need it for, like, you know, paying parking garages and shit like that. Uh, so I get in the car. After I pay the nice lady, I take off like a bat out of hell again into the city. I text Katie and I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I cannot make it for coffee. Can I hit you up after I'm done doing this TV thing? She's like, sure, no problem. We'll go have a drink. Great. Perfect. Get to the city. Pretty good time. I'm like, feeling pretty good about the time. I have just enough time to get to this stupid studio, which by the way, is not in a convenient neighborhood. And there are... So few places in the city to park as is. And then this particular neighborhood, finding a parking garage was a fucking nightmare. And so I'm driving around, driving around, and they've given me two parking garages in the area. Neither of those parking garages had any spaces. None whatsoever. So I'm like, oh, fuck, 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 fuck. Finally, I was able to find a parking garage. Pull in the parking garage park my car take off to the studio as soon as I get to the door of the studio ring 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 and it was someone who's had been trying to get a hold of me for a couple of days and I'm like shit I have to take this call Fuck. so I take the call and it's a reporter who wants to do a story and I'm like listen reporter love you mean it I really do and it's someone I know I'm like, I really love you, and I want to talk to you right now, but I am seconds, 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 seconds from going in to do this TV thing, uh, and so can I, can I'm like, can I call you back later? <laughs> Such an asshole. And he's like, oh yeah, yeah, no problem, fine, no worries. Great. Uh, so yeah, so then I'm there. I go inside. Now, you guys keep asking me what the TV show is. I know the name of the TV show, but I can't tell you because it's not a show that you have heard of yet. It's a brand new show. I can tell you this much. It will be airing on Bravo and Lifetime. And it's kind of a serious show. It's a, it's like a talk show, serious show covering like um, recent events and things like that. 
I'll also tell you that on the show that I was on, you may recall recently the story of the two lesbians who had the six-week-old child. Six-day-old. Six days. It wasn't even six weeks. It was six days. And uh, the pediatrician wouldn't see them because they were lesbian moms. So they wouldn't see their daughter. Also on the show was a young, uh, young uh, gay guy by the name of Gary who had recently been gay bashed. Also on the show, um, I'm trying to think. Uh, there was the owner of a diesel truck shop who I think was in the Michigan area who refuses to, um, uh, serve gay people in his, I don't know, repair shop. He said you could bring a gun to a shop and that'd be fine. But if you were a homosexual, that, that wasn't okay. Um, and then there was, uh, one of those like anti-gay, super crazy, um, I'm going to fight everything against the gay agenda type guys. I can't remember his name. He'd been on, he's been on Michelangelo's show a few times, so I do know that. Now, when you get to this place, I get it, I get in there, I walk in and the green room is like this big, this big. And when I walk into the green room, there are three ladies and a baby and everything that a baby needs. So giant stroller, giant diaper bag. The room is completely in disarray. Here I walk in with my shirts that they asked me to bring so that I'd have options for what I was going to wear. And I'm like, where? there wasn't even a spot for me to sit down. So then they're like, oh gosh, we don't have any room in this green room, do we? And I'm like, yeah, not really. So they're like, well, would you mind sitting in the hall? Now, I've been on a lot of television show over the years. So very many shows. And here's the thing. They're all the same. You go in. The producers are running around like crazy psychos trying to wrangle everybody, trying to get things so that it's on time and doing what it needs to be doing and people need to be where they need to be and you got to get into makeup and you got to get your hair done and blah, 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 all that crap. And it's just, it's chaos. It's just chaos. Controlled chaos, but chaos. So I'm sitting in the hallway, people are flying by, I'm getting introduced to people, it's craziness. And um, and then one by one, we all start doing our different segments on the show. Now what they told me was, you're going to be in our final segment. And in this segment, you're going to be on a panel with the crazy guy, with the crazy anti-gay activist guy. And we want you to go and get him. Go, go for him. And by the way, he doesn't even believe in homosexuality. Doesn't believe in it. And I'm thinking, what is the, it was, it's, it's like Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, uh, you know, Sherry Shepard doesn't believe the world is uh, round, but that doesn't make it true. So I'm like, okay, I'm ready. I got this. I can handle this asshat. I've handled assholes like this many times before. Well, <laughs> finally, it's my turn. I watch all the segments. They're great. Everything's going well. I see the guy who was the, the owned the uh, repair shop and the host of the show just completely demolishes him and makes him feel real bad, which frankly he should. And then it's my turn. So somehow or another, I was just supposed to be the two guys, me and the anti-gay guy, but for some reason they decided to expand the segment. So now it's the guy from the, the repair shop, the anti-gay guy, me, and then the poor young man who had been gay bashed recently, who was very nervous to be on the uh, panel. Because, I mean, he's still covered in bruises and cuts and his foot was in a cast. I mean, he was in bad shape still. And uh, so, anyway, we sit down and I told him, I'm like, don't worry, I'll sit next to the asshole. Because they had us kind of four in a row. I'm like, don't you worry, I'll sit next to the asshole. You don't have to sit next to him. This big, big, this big old dyke will protect you. <laughs> Because, you know, that's how I am. And I've done so many of these things that I'm pretty cool and collected when it when it comes to being on these types of shows and, you know, facing these kind of questions and all that. And so the cute kid sitting next to me, he was, he was so sweet. Oh, my God, he was so sweet. He's like, thank you, I appreciate it. He was really sweet. And so we started the segment. And, of course, uh, all the questions, because it's kind of like uh, they asked, the first question went to the anti-gay asshole. And so he keeps going, going, just talk, 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 talk. Oh, my God, he wouldn't shut the fuck up. That's how those guys are. And then the next question was supposed to come to me. But for whatever reason, the host decides, 
no, I'm not going to send a question to Romaine. Or he, he instead, well, he kind of did, but he kind of didn't. He kind of had me kind of add on to what the other guy had said. And I, you know, it was pretty much like, you know, gay people, when I look at people, I just see people, whether they're black or white or gay or straight or gender, I don't care. You know, let's just treat each other with respect, which we everyone on the panel could agree with, that you should see someone as a human being and treat everybody with respect. So then the host decides to go to Q&A. So now he's got all these crazy people in the audience asking questions. And here's the thing. They did not prepare this audience because a good producer would say to the audience, have a very clear, concise question, have an actual question for one, make sure it's clear, it's concise and very simple uh, for time. And, you know, so that you get your point across in a very easy to understand way. No. No. These people would stand up and they'd be like telling their life story. And then maybe if you were lucky, somewhere in it, there would be a question. So a lot of people wanted to talk to the uh, business owner who didn't want gay people in his shop. And more or less what came, it came down to with this guy is he essentially didn't want anybody in his shop, whether they were gay or straight, who was essentially having a PDA moment. Like, because he found that disgusting. And he didn't care whether it was a gay person or a straight person. Overall, he found it disgusting. Okay, fine. I get it. Whatever. Who likes PDA? I'm not all that for it either. But he was just getting beat up on and beat up on. And then someone said, well, let me ask you this question. If a couple came in, two guys came in, and they paid you, let's say, $5,000 to fix their truck. And they weren't exhibiting any gay behavior. And then, after they gave you the money, as they were walking out, uh, they held hands or kissed. Would you give them their money back, essentially was what they asked, or would you keep it? So this guy goes into this whole elaborate thing in his answer. He's like, well, you know... If a gay couple were to do that, they must have really thought out this prank that they were trying to play on me and blah, 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 blah. And he keeps going on. And finally, I just went, um, who's got time to do that? Like, legit, who has got time as gay people? You are gay people. You understand. Who has that kind of time? Like, I'm going to go to Iris and say, hey, listen, we're going to go down to this shop and we are going to pretend that we're straight to, and we're going to give this guy some money. And then when we go to leave, we're going to kiss each other just to see what he's going to do. Nobody's got time for that. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard, which, by the way, is exactly what I said. I'm like, this is ridiculous. That's not going to happen. Oh, my God. Not going to happen. Oh, anyway, I did a lot of stuff like that where I was like, are you, I would just, I would just comment. Are you guys crazy? What is this? Come on. And then there were some moments where the people pissed me off and I was just like, ah, um, yeah, whatever. So I went, I did this thing. People were asking, when is it going to air? When is it going to air? It's going to air, I think in July, I want to say, is when it's going to air. I don't. I won't know more until probably we get closer to it. Uh, but um, it will air sometime in July, I think. Oh, and when my title, oh my God, they're so funny. So they're like, Romaine Patterson is a radio host and an American LGBT activist. Uh, <laughs> I guess I'm a patriot. <laughs> I, I mean, I like to think of myself as an international LGBT activist. Don't forget the Q, LGBTQ, the gay BLT. I like to think international, not, don't, don't restrict me to my homeland. What about Canada? Have I not done any activism in Canada? Ridiculous. Anyway, it made me laugh, the title they gave me. I was just like, this, oh, stupid. <laughs> So then, when everything was said and done, they take us back to the tiny green room, all five bazillion. Oh, actually, before they take us back, the guy who is the anti-gay owner of the business comes over and he says to me and to Gary, the, the young gay guy who had gotten gay bashed, he goes, you know, 
Because we had had a very civil conversation. None of us were rude to one another. We were actually quite polite to each other. He goes, you know, I want you guys to know, I would take you guys to dinner anytime. Anytime. You guys want to go to dinner after the show, I'd take you to dinner right now. But you wouldn't fix my car. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, dude, do you really hate gay people? Or did you just say something really stupid online and it got a lot of attention? And rather than apologize, you're trying to find a way to like support this or do you think you're going to be like that pizzeria couple where people are just going to donate a million dollars to you because you said something stupid i don't know i didn't think he was really that anti-gay to be really honest but whatever i found it funny though that he was willing to take us to uh to dinner but i think i wanted to ask him this is the question i want to ask him if i brought a gun to your uh, place of business, because he's pro-gun. And he said, go ahead and bring gun to my business. So I, if I brought a gun to his business and I'm a lesbian, would he fix my car? Fair question, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this shit. Oh, God. I don't even know. Anywho, ridiculous, right? Completely ridiculous. After it's all said and done, they take us back to the green room. We're sitting there. And they will not let me leave. I'm like, I gotta get over and have a drink with uh, Katie. And then I gotta get back because I gotta do the periscope with the bitches. I, got, I gotta go. Won't let me leave. Because they're like, oh, we're gonna pay for your parking. Okay, great. It's gonna be all of $8. Great. That's wonderful. Well, a PA is gonna have to walk over with you to pay for it. Okay, great. Can we go now? Oh, no. The host wants to take a picture with you. Why did we do that when we were upstairs? Ah, so they kept me hostage there for probably another half an hour. I'm like, I don't have time for this. I, you know, I have a life to live. I gotta get, I gotta get out of here. Come on. Ah, whatever. Finally, I'm done. I finally get cut loose. At which point, I get in my car. I fly uptown to Harlem to go have a cocktail with Katie, Kate, Katie. That was good. I always love it. Uh, I get to see Katie. She makes me happy. I've been jealous of Derek getting to see Katie uh, ever since all this stuff has happened. So I, I went up there and we had a lovely chat. We got to talk about all the stuff that's happening in the world. We talked a little bit about um, where she's ending up. She's, uh, it sounds like she is going to be producing uh, Wake Up With Taylor which I think is on stars. I can't remember. I don't remember. Anyway, that's where she's going to be. I think starting next week sometime. So be on the lookout for that. Um, and so we talked about that. We talked about, you know, obviously what Derek and I have been up to. And I told her, I said, if given the chance, you know, I'll steal you. <laughs> I will steal you back away from Sirius XM. I will. I will because she's the best producer. And in all honesty, Katie has been the best producer of our show. You know, we've had a lot of different producers over the years. I really like Danglin Dan as a producer. I thought he he brought some really interesting and cool elements to the show. Um, but I feel like Katie has has been the strongest producer. She certainly has a way of dealing with Derek and I that um, other producers were not capable. They were just not capable of handling us. We would drive them nuts. And we may drive Katie nuts, but at least she was capable of dealing with us. So that was nice. Uh, I thought Ashley was good. Ashley was great, but she wasn't the producer. She was the associate producer. Um, the main producer when Ashley was there was Katie. What? No Amber? Barbara. Don't get me in trouble. Why you guys? You guys always say these things and ask these questions. You're bad. Where are you going? Uh, right now, I'm not going anywhere. I'm sitting here and talking to you. But where I am going, we don't know yet. And I promise, when we have a direction, whether it's Derek and I or me or Derek, we will let you guys know. I promise you. And the only way to find out is to hang out with us. Keep coming to our scopes. Keep uh, following us on Twitter and Facebook and all of those places. That's how you're going to find out. I promise you. You guys will be the first to know if and when we land on our feet. Okay? Are you trying to stay together? Yes. Yes, we are. We are going to make every attempt to do that. Uh, and we're going to follow every lead that we can. What are you doing this weekend? Uh, I know I have a party to go to on Saturday. Some of my friends are having a party, so we're going to go 
Um, we're going to go to a party with our friends and we're going to try to uh, relax. Yeah, that, that's kind of the plan, I think. Um, I just want to kind of lay back we get. I feel like ever since last Wednesday, life has been incredibly, incredibly hectic. And I would really just like to have a day or two to just take a deep breath. Uh, we're on edge waiting for the next DNR move. Me too. Oh God, me too. Trust me. I wish I had an answer for you right now because then, uh, that would make me feel a lot better because then I know I have a paycheck coming at some point. Would love to see Iris pop in. Good luck. <laughs> Iris does not like to pop in. Uh, she likes to hide in the other room. She hears me talking to you guys. She hears me asking these questions. She knows you're asking for her. Please? No. No. Eat a tortilla. That is if Iris left you some. Barbara, who sent me some tortillas the other day, some H-E-B tortillas because I love them, she has been eating them all. All of them. She's such a pig. Oh, she's so mean. Honestly, she makes me crazy eating all of my fucking tortillas. Uh, okay, I'm trying to read all these. Uh, I missed the Sirius XM uh, exit. What happened? Uh, our show was canceled because they wanted to move in a different creative direction for the channel and our time slot. That's all I can tell you. Can you show us some of your Disney figures? Uh, yeah, I could do that. Give me a minute and I will, I'll have Iris grab one for me. Uh, hugs gotta go, but dig in the do. Thank you, Floyd. I appreciate that. Has Iris gotten drunk and peed anywhere lately? No. Thank God. Huh. That's, that's not good. We don't, we don't want any more Iris peeing in public. Uh, Ursula. You want to see another Ursula? Is that what you're telling me? I can, I can probably get another one of my Ursula, um, Vinylmations. Let me see if Iris will grab one for me. Iris, honey. Will you grab one of my Vinylmation Ursula um, customs out of the case and bring it here? Maybe the white one. Thanks. You don't have to be on camera unless you want to be. <laughs> Romy's like, be on camera. I... First time seeing you with no hat. It's true. I do wear hats most of the time, but I do have hair. Bluish hair right now. Um, it's there. Where are you hiding Romy? Romy is in the other room. She is, I, she's playing Minecraft, I think, at the moment. It's her obsession. She's bored, I guess. She didn't want to blow bubbles tonight. I'm surprised. I'm drinking out of my favorite mug, by the way. Let me see. I can show you the front of it. Because it has Ursula on it. You guys didn't know my, my obsession with Ursula was this strong, did you? I have a sombrero wearing Iris who's bringing me a Vinylmation. See the lengths that she will go to not have to be on camera? She'll wear a, a sombrero over her face. The truth is she doesn't want to be on camera because she's not wearing a bra. All right. So uh, I will show you a custom. So this is a custom by an artist named Celeste, and she was doing these um, uh, sketch Vinylmation customs where she would sketch different uh, characters on uh, the smaller three-inch ones, and I asked her if she would make a nine-inch version of Ursula for me. So that's, that's what this one is. So here's the front of it. You can see how she sketched out the whole character on the front. It's pretty cool. And then on the back, well, on the arms, there's Floatsome on that arm. There's Jetsum on this arm. And then on the back, it says, Poor Unfortunate Souls. And it's got the little squiggly worm things that she turns the mer merfolk into. So this one, was, this one was special made just for me. And what I love about um, all these great custom vinylmations that I've purchased over the years is... Not only do I get to support, uh, you know, uh, up and coming artists, cause I feel like these are great artists and I love being able to support their work, but, um, you know, it's nice to have original artwork and that's, 
That's one of the things. I mean, all the ones, most of the ones behind me in the Vinylmation wall are printed and painted by, you know, people who work for Disney. But the custom ones are really nice because they're one of a kind. They're an original piece of artwork. And you support uh, young artists, mostly. And some really talented artists. I mean, I haven't even showed you some of my favorites yet. Uh, but I've, I've really, I've got some great, great uh, talented artists that have um, created stuff for me. Is that Daryl behind you? Yes, that is Daryl from The Walking Dead back there. Santa Claus brought Iris that uh, standee a couple of years ago, and it's been in our house ever since. Oh, boy. Okay. Uh, do a YouTube series on them. On my Vinylmations? I could, I suppose. Um, I don't know. That seems like a lot of work. <laughs> Are those Vinylmations like the pop figures from but uh, but but in Disney? They are similar, but these are the the thing that makes Vinylmation interesting. So you see, um, the the essentially you have a canvas, and the white canvas is a Mickey Mouse shape. It's a 3D canvas, so you can paint it in a lot of different ways, and the artists apply their art to the 3D canvas. Um, it's made of vinyl, which is why it's called vinyl, and Mation is for animation. So you combine the words, and you get um, this. Every one of the ones behind me is in this figure. It's a Mickey Mouse shaped canvas, and each of them is painted differently than the others. So that is why, that's what makes these so unique. So you can have, like me, thousands of Vinylmations, and they're all different. Uh, and each of them tells a different story or, you know, talks, uh, you know, speaks to a different movie or something like that. Um, and it's really cool and unique. So that's why I like it so much. Um, you should get a 3D printer and then you can make your own. Uh, aren't those expensive, those 3D printers? I don't have that kind of money. Do they have cookie jars? No, but if they did, I'd buy one. I need a good cookie jar. That's something I don't have. You know, when I was a kid, I had, um, Ernie, a Burton Ernie, and used to grab his hair to take off his head to get all the cookies inside. Oh, I fucking loved it. Are they all that size? Uh, the nine, there are two sizes. There's a nine inch and a three inch Vinylmation. I prefer to collect the three inch because they're smaller and I can put more in my house. The nine inches are hard to collect because they're bigger and they take up a lot more room. So I never really got into the nine inch ones. I have a few, but most of the ones I have are custom, custom Vinylmations. Our library is getting a 3D printer. Maybe a local one has one. Oh, that's kind of cool. I should look into that. That would be kind of neat. You prefer nine inches. Nine inches are hard. Oh my God, you guys. This is, we're talking Disney. We're not talking sex. Oh my God. You guys are so bad. Someone wants to see the uh, Vitalmation I bought myself a couple of years ago and put under the Christmas tree. I promise I will show that one. That's actually one of my favorite ones. So I will show that one uh, one of these days. I don't want to show them all at the same time because then, you know, I've got to, got to keep you guys guessing what's next. <laughs> Which Vinylmation was my first? Um, well, it wasn't my first. It was actually Iris's first, and it was a chaser from the Holiday One series. And it was this little Mickey had hearts for eyes. Um, and that was that was what that one was. I miss my sex bird. Well, I'm right here. Y'all act like I died. That's the thing. That is the thing on Facebook. I look at all these messages, and it's like I've died. I have not died, people. I promise you. I am right here. Oh, my goodness. You guys are killing me. Uh, I hear a viewer sent you one from Paris Disney. He must be. I missed the rest. He must be awesome. Of course he is. Yes, I do have. I have actually a few from Paris, but I have some very good ones, and I do have a friend who is always keeping me in and up with some of the great uh, vinyls that are hard to get. Derek said the same thing. Y'all aren't dead. Exactly. This is a message you need to hear. We are not dead. My goodness. You guys are killing me here. Now, I guess uh, we'll, uh, I'll go ahead and open it up to questions. The Betty Cup of Tea is my favorite one you have. Such a sweet memory to have. Yeah, I love that one. That one, I that one really makes me that makes me happy. That's a nice one to have. Gay uh, bed death, lesbian bed death, fact or myth? I think it doesn't matter whether you're gay, straight, lesbian. I think all relationships, uh, usually not all, but I would say most relationships at some point in time will have a lull in sex life. And that is for a lot of reasons. People uh, forget to want to have sex, which I don't know why. 
uh, sex drive drops as you get older. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of factors there um, that can lead to it. And you know, you get busy in day to day life. You go to work. You come home. You're tired. You don't want to have sex. It, there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, someone asked about my P.O. box. If you go to my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Romaine Patterson, I posted my P.O. box number on there yesterday. I forgot to write it down in my rush to get here today, but I will write it down and I'll have it for you guys tomorrow. Uh, what do you think of this season of Orange is the New Black? I loved it. I thought it was a good season. Not quite as strong as the last season, uh, but I really, really did like it. And uh, it, I thought it was a really good, uh, a really good season. I really liked some new characters. I think you know which ones. Yeah. Uh, are you going to Periscope tomorrow morning if the SCOTUS ruling happens? Yeah, I might. Uh, I wouldn't rule that out. I have tomorrow a little bit. Tomorrow is finally a free day for me. So, yes. Can we inbox you sexpert questions? You can. Romaine Patterson at Gmail. And I will try to answer those um, as quickly as I can. What size t-shirts do I like to wear? XXL or triple XL? Oh, big girl. I got big tits. Uh, so yes, there you go. Uh, should I go to DC even though my class doesn't get out until 11? Uh, if you want to, I mean, it would be kind of nice to be there as a part of history. Why not? Um, it's going to be, it's going to be a big deal, I think, when that ruling comes down. And I think it's going to be very good for us. Okay. Is Iris getting tired of you broadcasting from home? I don't think so. She hasn't said so. I don't know. She's probably just happy that there's something that's keeping me from burying my head in the pillows and crying myself to sleep. So <laughs> I think anything that makes me smile and keeps me from uh, going, oh, Sarah, worry, oh, God, my life's going to suck forever. She is very happy that I'm doing it. So, yes, I'm going to say she doesn't mind. And I'm out of her hair. Yes, she does like that. Uh, is it possible there will be a gay days at, uh, a meetup at gay days? Should I bring cupcakes? Uh, I wouldn't rule it out. Um, I don't know for certain, but I wouldn't say, I'm not going to 100% say no until, you know, we get a little bit closer and then I should have a better answer. Did I talk to Derek today? I talk to Derek every day. I've been talking to Derek every day pretty much for 12 years. So of course I talked to Derek today. Uh, he called with some good news and some bad news. <laughs> as he put it. Uh, so, which by the way, the bad news was not that bad. Uh, but yeah, we talked, uh, we talked about some stuff today. So Iris should do a question and answer to our questions. Please Iris from one Texan to another. Uh, do you still keep in touch with the shepherds? Uh, you know what? I have not seen either Judy or Dennis in uh gosh, it's been a while actually. Um, and that's just because, you know, they live in Wyoming. I live in New York. Uh, there, there are not a lot of times when our paths cross, uh, but I, I like to think that we have a very good relationship and, um, I think the world of them. So there you go. Does Iris still have a chapstick problem? I don't remember Iris having a chapstick problem. Can you convince Miss Tiger to get Periscope? I can ask. Uh, I know she actually, she might have it cause she's watched these videos. Did you go see Jurassic World yet? No. I haven't. Maybe on a day when I have nothing going on. It has not been one of those days recently, so maybe when that happens. Bye, Tiger! <laughs> uh, okay. Did you ever buy the Apple Watch? No! I had been saving up money for it, but now I'm unemployed and I feel like it's really irresponsible if I go and buy myself an Apple Watch when I don't have a job. <sighs> Try to be a responsible human being. So, no, I have not. Able to get out in six with the top down. Oh, my God. You guys, I didn't even tell you about this. The most amazing thing happened last night. Okay. I don't know how many of you were here when I did my late night uh, quickie periscope on my way home from the city. But it was nighttime. It was a beautiful night out. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to put on some loud fucking music. I'm going to put the top down on six. Oh, I cannot wait. I'm going to drive home. And it's going to make me feel good. So that's what I did. Put the top down, put my music on, fucking, oh, I turned it up real loud. I was driving down the highway, and I'm almost home, and all of a sudden, and we're and the, the traffic was going kind of slow because there was construction happening. So I'm kind of kind of going a little slow, a little slow, it's fine. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, right above my head, I'm not even kidding, I'm not making this up, these huge, huge, 
huge fireworks start going off. Like, right above my fucking head. And I'm sitting there in the car with my music, and I'm looking up, and there's all this just, just gorgeous fireworks everywhere. They're just everywhere. And I'm like, oh, my God. And they were so close, I felt like I could reach out and touch them. That's how close they were. It was crazy. I'd never seen anything like it in my life. And it was amazing i actually i got home and i immediately texted my brother because we've been having this like all these like great conversations about life and the future and all these signs the universe sends you and shit and then i texted him like oh my god you'll never believe what happened tonight on my way home it was amazing <laughs> it was so cool i kind of loved it and it was just me in the middle of the highway with crazy fireworks and no my prissy car was not on fire my goodness. But it was really fucking cool. I was like, I could not believe it. Anywho, I wish you'd all been there to see it because it was neat. I would have periscoped it, but <laughs> I think I might have, you know, driven off the road or something if I did that. So, you know, whatever. Okay. Uh, I've been going on for a while. So I'm going to, 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 I'm going to cut this off for tonight. Uh, but I'll be back tomorrow. I will try... Try, try. Uh, Chuck wants to know, can I show you six? I've actually uh, done some of uh, Periscopes in six, and I will do some where you can actually see what she looks like on the outside soon. Um, but if you miss the Periscope, go to my YouTube page. There's a post, there's a link up on um, on my uh, Facebook page for Romaine Patterson, facebook.com slash Romaine Patterson. And you can find the YouTube link that will take you to my YouTube channel, which, by the way, you should subscribe to if you haven't already, because that's where you will find any Periscope videos that I make that have expired on Periscope, okay? So, uh, can you see my house sometime? Yes, as soon as I get it clean. I have not had time to get it clean. But I promise you, uh, I will, I'll work on that, okay? Okay. That being said, all the information you need to follow me on Facebook and Twitter and Periscope and YouTube, it's all on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Romaine Patterson. If you want to help Derek and I, the best thing you can do is follow us in social media. I cannot say that enough times. Uh, now, guys, have a good night. I will see you tomorrow. We will talk tomorrow. If you have questions for me, email them in. I will try to prepare for tomorrow uh, for our Periscope time together. In the meantime, kisses to the bitches. I will talk to you all soon. Bye!